In this new series, we are going to create something truly unique, a fully mechanical, cinematic-style robotic bird built entirely in Blender. We will start from scratch, modeling every piece of its structure, including those three robotic arms inspired by polyefort design. Then we will build a dynamic metallic tail powered by physics simulations and wave painting for full interactive control. Once the design is complete, we will dive deep into the rigging process, setting up inverse kinematics, constraints, and all the moving parts to bring this robotic creature into life. And of course, we will animate it, from the motion of the wings and arms to the subtle flow of the tail. In the final part, we will build the scene around it, a detailed backdrop with a scattered droplets made using geometry nodes, then finish everything up with the cinematic lighting and procedural shadings. So if you love complex blender projects with a mix of creativity, realism, and technical depth, this one's for you. So let's dive in and start bringing our robotic bird into life. So to start, press Shift A in the mesh, add an icosphere. Then open this button menu from which we can add just the icosphere and set the subdivisions on 5. Then right click to shape or to smooth. Now press N to open the side menu and set the dimensions on 3 to make it a little bigger. Then press F2 and rename it to main body. Then for the upcoming robotic arms, we should consider some sort of, uh, shall we call them ports? Some parts where arm will be connected to the main body. And for them, we can again use some icospheres. So shift A at another icosphere. Set the subdivisions on 4. Press numpad 3 to go into side view and place it at the front of the main body. Like so. Set the dimensions on 1.5 to make it smaller. Right click shade O to smooth, press F2, rename it to port front. Then for the back ports, we can use the same icosphere that we put at the front. So select it, press Shift D to make a duplicate and move it to the back. Then drag it down a little bit and move it to the right a tiny bit. Because next up, we are going to add another port on the left side. So we can simply press Shift D to make a duplicate, then right click to drop it in the same place. Then go to object panel and for the X location, whatever number you have, just add a minus at the front. And by doing that, you can be 100% precise. Now with it selected, we can rename it to port back L, which means the left port back. And this one, port back R. These three ports are for the class. And we are also going to have some tails. So let's duplicate the front port and move it to the back. Then move it down a little bit and place it on top of the back ports. Then decrease the dimensions. So something like this looks nice. Rename it to port tail. Let's duplicate it and move it here. This looks nice. Rename it to port tail too. And also slightly increase the dimension just to have a little bit of variations. Then duplicate it once more and put it here. Rename it to port tail 3. Now we need another icosphere that seems kind of to be parented to the tail, but it is totally different than what this seems. So let's duplicate it once more, put it here. And what should we actually call it? Tail blob? <laughs> let's go with it. Then increase its dimension a lot. This is going to be big. And let's set it on wireframe because we are going to put the last one inside it. So to do that, go to the object panel, come down, viewport display, set the display as to wire, just to have a better look. And then place it somewhere around here. This seems nice. And we can always tweak that. Then duplicate the port tail tree and put it inside the blob. What sort of name is this? We can slightly decrease the dimension and then rename it to light blob. And there it goes. 
Now let's add the arms and connect them to the main body. So I put the link to download an arm in the description and as I have mentioned before, if you want to learn how to make those robotic arms from zero to hero, just check out the poly effort tutorial, the link will be in the description. So after downloading the file, it of course comes as a blend file. You can open the blend file, then press A to select everything. Press Ctrl C to copy and if you have the copy attributes add-on enabled, you have to choose copy objects. Now return to our own project. Press Ctrl V to paste and mine will just snap into place. So I select the bone tree and just offset it a little bit so that you can learn how to snap it in place. So select the entire parts of the arm, press M to move it to a new collection and call it arm1. Now let's start the connecting process. So select the port front, press Shift S, cursor to select it to bring the 3D cursor over here. Then select the bone tree, Shift S, and this time selection to cursor so that the bone tree will be snapped into the port front. Make sure the bone tree is selected, then Shift select the port front, press Ctrl P, and choose Object, Keep Transform. Now if we select the port front and move it, it controls the bone tree and subsequently the arm. And the rest of the process is done by this empty. And if you are not familiar with this robotic arm, you can select the claw bones, press Ctrl Tab to go into pose mode. Select the first bone, press R, X, and you should rotate it on its local X axis. So you can press X twice. Or you can simply set the transformation orientation on local. Now you can press R and X once. And it will work. Do the same thing with the top bone. That's a really powerful rig made by Polyafort. Now press Ctrl Tab again to jump back into object mode. Select the port front, Shift select the main body, Ctrl P, object, keep transform. Now the main body controls them. And this is exactly what we want. This is going to be really fun. Next up, we should make two more arms. So in the outliner, right click on the arm one collection and choose select objects, which will select the entire objects existing in the collection. Then in the viewport, press shift D to make a duplicate. Offset them a little bit, then press M to move them to a new collection and obviously arm two. And remember, since we have duplicated the arm 1, the arm 2 is also parented to the port front. So select the port back right, Shift S, cursor to select it. Then select the bone tree of arm 2, Shift S, selection to cursor. There it goes. Now make sure the bone tree is selected, Shift select the port back right, Ctrl P, object, keep transform. Let's test if it works. Yeah. Select the bone tree. Then enable the rotation tool and you can rotate it like so. Select the IK target and move it down. So this seems nice. Now select the port back right, shift select the main body, control P, object, keep transform. And you know what happens. And by the way, select the IK target of the arm too, press S to scale it down. And by doing that, we can make some variations. Yeah, I guess this is much better now. This is always nice to have some difference and variations. Now do the same process, duplicate the arm for the port back L. So this is what we have so far. The next step is creating the tail. So let's come over here, hold down the shift key and then right click over here to bring the 3D cursor over here. Just to have some more room to work with. And to make the tail, we can take advantage of our good friend, Master Cube. Then adjust the dimensions to have a shape like this. This seems nice. And to give it some details, let's give it the bevel modifiers. So go to the modifiers panel, at modifier in the generate, give it the bevel modifier. And I guess the bevel is not working correctly. That should be because we have changed the scale, but we didn't apply it. So control A to apply the scale. Now it is working properly. 
So let's decrease the amount a little bit. This seems nice. Then to soften these new edges and let me enable the cavity to have a better look. To soften these new edges, we can give it another bevel modifier. For the segment, let's go for three and we can decrease the amount. Yeah, this seems better. Now we can disable the cavity. Then right click shade auto smooth. Something like that looks nice. Now we can go into edit mode, select this top face, press X to delete. We don't need that actually. Then select the edge selection tool, hold down the alt key, click on this edge to make a loop select. Shift S, cursor to select it. Go back into object mode, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now if we press R, you get the idea. So let's snap it into place. Select the port tail, shift S, cursor to select that. Select the tail and let's actually rename it to tail one. Shift S, selection to cursor. Go to the side view and rotate it like so. This seems nice. Go into edit mode, select this bottom face, shift S, cursor to select that. Then select the port tail two, shift S, selection to cursor. And let's move this a little back. Select the tail one, shift D to make a duplicate, right click to drop it. Again, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now we can rotate it and place it on the other side. This is really nice. Rename it to tail two. And let's give it its dimensions, a little bit of variations. And actually make it a little smaller. So I guess this is fine. Go into edit mode and select this edge loop shift s cursor to select it jump back into object mode select the port tail 3 shift s selection to cursor then select these two and adjust them a little bit so this is really fine now let's start rigging the tail and it is going to be a nice and fun setup Believe me, after the rigging process is done, you will face a bunch of different options to animate it. And it is really interesting. So select the port tail one, which is this one. Shift S and cursor to select it. Then press Shift A and add an armature. So we have an armature. With it selected, go to the bone data panel, viewport display and set the display as to a stick. Just to have a cleaner viewport, then enable in front so that we can have easy access to it. Now select the port tail two, shift S, cursor to select it. Select the bone, press tab to go into edit mode and select this top head, this one. Press shift S, selection to cursor. Everything is coming together. Now press E to make an extrude, which means now we have a new bone that is parented to the first one. First, go back into object mode, select the port tail three, Shift S, cursor to select it. Select the armature, go into edit mode, make sure this head is selected. Shift S, selection to cursor. There it goes. Go into object mode, go into object mode, and now we should parent this tree to the first bone. So select the armature and press Ctrl Tab to go into pose mode. And you can do it also from here. Select the first bone, press Ctrl Tab again to jump back into object mode. And Blender will remember which bone you have chosen. Select the mentioned parts, this, this, and this. Then finally, Shift select the armature to make it the active object. Press Ctrl P and choose parent to bone. Now we can select the armature, press Ctrl Tab to go into pose mode and select the first bone. And if you press R to rotate it, there it goes. You can see the result. Next up, select the second bone, go into object mode, select the tail two, shift select the armature, control P, parent to bone. Select the armature, go into pose mode, and now we have a setup like this for now. And it is working really fine. Now let's add an IK target to this bone tree, which is really fun. And it will make working with it really interesting. So in the pose mode, Make sure the second bone is selected. Head over to the pose menu. Here you can see the inverse kinematics. Select add IK to bone. And finally to new empty object. Now we can go into object mode and see that we have a new empty object here, which is our IK target. So if we select and move it, you can see what happens. 
So with this empty selected, shift select the blob. I still can't figure out how I came up with this name. First control P, object, keep transform. Now if we select the blob and move it, it moves the tail. And also parent this port tail 3 to the blob. And also the light blob. So this is really fine. But this tail is not actually parented to the main body. So to fix that, select the armature, shift, select the main body, control P, object, keep transform. Now see the result. Just imagine how many options do you have to animate it. We have a nice setup. By the way, select all the tail elements, all the ports, blobs, and armatures. And press M to move it to a new collection and obviously call it tail. It is always nice to be neat. The next in the row will be that tail that has a feather-like movement, for which we are going to take advantage of the class physics. And making that feather-like tail is going to be a little tricky, but don't worry, I will cover everything. Yeah.